Well, there's a, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, well, there's a lot to this, of course. And I know you probably heard people in uh, our court talk about it. But if you look at, uh, of course, it's a chart on the pattern plan of salvation. And the chart's threefold. But the top one are, is, is Yahweh. You know, um, in your head region, you have what's called the arterial circle of Willis, which uh, that's what his will is, that he's overturning things. And isn't that what those circles do? They're just like a wheel going through. You know, you know, when a wheel rolls, it just keeps on going all the way down. Well, anyway, you first have Yahweh Elohim there. There's a lot of scriptures up in there. Matter of fact, we didn't read Titus 1 and 2. But one of the first scriptures you'll have there, too, is Matthew 25, 34, which, uh, which you know in the, um, uh, boy, you know, when you go to the 40 plate chart, you also read, and a matter of fact, the words that it has there, you can't read it very well, but it says the kingdom of Elohim. And so on the 40 play chart, you'll see those nine attributes, and then you'll see uh, going around it that is a red heart, that's, and it has at the bottom kingdom. And that's the scripture that's there is uh, Matthew 25, 34, when it says he told them on the right hand, come thou blessed and inherit the kingdom which was prepared before the foundation of the world. See, So what you do is that's the biggest circle and that's, and that's, that's, that's Yahweh Elohim. Uh, I like how Dr. Kinley put it, going into his direct concentrated creative motion. <laughs> Damn, that's what he said. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Kinley had a really great way of saying stuff. That's what he said. <laughs> yeah, yo, that's crazy. They, yo, they, they think all oh, this is recorded. Yeah, he <laughs> said, he said Yahweh, and, and that man. Okay. Well, I'll say this. One, when you look at these plates, like uh, look down below just for a moment. Uh, you know, when we see, we talk about him having a round trip, right? Well, see, uh, when you're going from the most holy place down, that's the materialization of spirit. That's him coming down from pure, you know, super incorporeal form down into the, the atoms. And I guess you could show it anyway. And then, well, there's three anyway. Which, which one the, do you want? The pattern goes down and then it goes back up. Uh, so, okay. Okay. boy, it's hard to explain. But, but what when we say it goes down and it goes back up, it's still the same pattern, but that's what we call a round trip, right? Because mm -hmm. it's like Yahweh coming down as Elohim, down into as Yahshua, then Yahshua's going back through Elohim, then back to Yahweh. You see how it's a round trip? Well, that's mm -hmm. kind of like what those circles are showing, okay? So the first thing that you'll see is you'll see that here's Elohim. And now when, he, when you have the creation, it has Genesis 1 and 2 there. And then what you have is this is in a the earth's in a chaotic state, but you do have the spirit of Elohim that's going to take that chaotic substance and he's going to create uh, the creation. There's always chaosis before the creation comes in. You understand? Just like the children of Israel, when he poured out them 10 devastating plagues down, <laughs> Egypt, wasn't, it, wasn't it real dark down there? You understand? He had the plague of darkness, but then he delivered them out. You see that? Uh, and that, 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 that uh, well, that's a deliverance, in other words. Uh, and so, so from this, uh, that substance that's without discernible shape and form, now it takes on shape and form, and you'll see how he's got the creation finished there in the next one. So you have, so, and what I always look at is when you see a dark, when you see the dark one, that's like a death barrier. See? And then, and then when he resurrects and ascends and, and ta everything takes on shape and form and he gives everything life. And then he's got uh, in this, on this chart, he's got the fall of Adam, the flood, the Melchizedek priesthood, then there's the law. Then he has the prophecy, then the birth of Joshua and his life. You see, that's all in that one circle there. <laughs> And that was all given to a vision to Moses and the prophets and then Yahshua coming in and fulfilling those things. 
Okay. Uh, but then so so then from the fall of Adam, man's in a death and a burial state. So the next one shows that Yahshua the Messiah has got to come in. And matter of fact, at Exodus 12 and 12, it says that Yahweh is going to go through that land and judge that people. Uh, he's going to execute judgment on all the gods of Egypt. Okay. And, and, uh, and that's when he had that uh, Passover lamb killed. Well, it's testifying to Yahshua the Messiah. In other words, he's coming to deliver mankind. Now, Jeremiah 4, 23 and 28 uh, he says that he will not make a full end. That means that the, the, the creation wasn't going to end totally. You understand? But what you have in this chart here, too, is kind of diff. Uh, I'll say it's different in this one case. You got to look at a bunch of different ones. But but what this was showing here is those two rings down below here. Mm -hmm. They should be one of them should be white. Then the other one has darkness. Then you have white, and it shows the two days and the two nights. You know what I'm saying? You see how the whole thing's darkness when he's on the cross there? What well, did turn dark when he died on the cross? See, and and, 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 it, where it, was, and it was light. But well, I'll say it this way: uh, it was light when he's on the cross, and it turned darkness. Why he's on the cross, and it turned light, and they buried him, and he got the Sabbath there. Right. That's when he was put in the tomb was for that Sabbath. See, and then all that night. So you do have two days and two nights. That's a phenomenal day. That's pretty much what that's showing there. Okay. And it's showing and showing the gospel. It's showing Yahshua's death and burial. In other words, man's been dead from the fall of Adam. They're buried in that darkness and on those carnal ordinances. And it took Yahshua the Messiah to deliver man from that. You understand? And then in Matthew, in Matthew 27, 45, right there, it says, and there was darkness uh, from the sixth hour to the ninth hour. That means from uh, noon to 3 p.m. It's darkness, so you got darkness there, okay? Then it was light when they buried it, and then darkness again. Well, anyway, those are showing two days, two nights. So you have a death burial. See, the Gospels... See, what I say, you know, from the kiosis as a death burial, then a resurrection and ascension with the creation, give everything life. Then uh, from the fall of Adam, man's dead and buried, so it took Yahshua Messiah to die and bury for man. And you have the crucifixion, that's death, burial, Yahshua. And see that little, mm, well, there's a lot of stuff that they're not showing there. But anyway, uh, look, at, look at the next one. It says resurrection and ascension. <laughs> he pours out the Holy Spirit, starting the dispensation of grace. Uh, which and, and these waters there, like the living waters that's poured out. When the Holy Spirit's poured out, Yahshua Messiah said in John, uh, well, it depends what version you have. King James will say 737 says, Any man that thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth in me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Thus he spake of the Holy Spirit, but it was not yet given because Yahweh was not yet glorified. See, and you see that doves represent the Holy Spirit poured out. Now, that's what began this age there. But so where you have a resurrection and ascension, see, when every time you go up in the pattern, there's only one direction to go, and that's what? Down. See, so, and that's what we have on the, well, and so the next thing you have is after the Holy Spirit's poured out, the ones that don't have the Holy Spirit, and they're carnal minded, they're anti Messiah, the pagan and papal persecution. Uh, they're uh, they're in darkness and they're per, uh, they're persecuting the sons. And what that red circle in there that's representing the spiritual body of Yahshua. How that you're how that uh, the sons are being surrounded by the darkness that's in the world. You understand? By the false prophets and they're being persecuted. See, when somebody has the Holy Spirit, you're persecuted with them that don't have it. <laughs> They're going to talk about you. They're going to, you understand? They're going to lie on you. They're going to do all kind of crazy stuff. You understand? That's their job. You saw them do that. The, the apostle uh, Paul, before he was an apostle, he's out there persecuting them that were 
preaching the gospel because he'd been lied to about the Savior's going to, that the, the, they stole his body away. And they're out there saying, see, they didn't resurrect. But when Yahshua appeared to him, he found out, oh, he did resurrect because I saw him for myself through a divine vision revelation and gave him an understanding. And he wasn't, he never turned back from then, did he? So man's in a death burial state by the satanic spirit, even though the Holy Spirit's poured out. But then, but then what, what does Yahweh give here at the end? He gives a man a vision and revelation. And you know, ever since the Holy Spirit's poured out, you read about judgment and you'll see resurrection on this last circle. See, the it'll talk, and that's where we are. We're at the end and, uh, and the wicked's going to be punished. And uh, those that re that light there is representing those that with the Holy Spirit, they're going to receive an immortal glorified body. But those that didn't get resurrected by the Holy Spirit, uh, they're going to be punished in the lake of fire and the earth's going to be destroyed. And then and so uh, so there is a resurrection from that. And, and then you can be in his body. And it says, do you see how it says the kingdom of Elohim again? Uh, new heaven, new earth. And those same scriptures are the one. And that's that's what's coming up in the next age. In other words, uh, there won't be no physical bodies. See, that's the fifth age there. Uh, if you like, if you looked at the dispensation ages chart, the fifth age is likened unto the fifth day of creation. Fifth day of creation, you have birds in the heavens being free, and you got fish in the waters or the lake. So that's what's going to happen in the fifth age. And it's also represented by the fifth, the holy place in the tabernacle. When you go into the holy place, those vessels are either gold or overlaid with gold. They're representing spirit bodies in the fifth age. They're representing spirit bodies I'm at the fifth age. I just talked about the holy place just being the fifth step. But so it's representing that there's going to be spirit bodies. He's burned all the physical up. And now he's bringing it into immortality now. And you're either going to be like one of his angels, which are like the birds flying in the fifth day of creation, or you're going to be like, you're going to be in the lake of fire. And that's what, makes an eternal life you don't have the devil bothering you no more <laughs> to win in that total bliss just just enjoying the, the uh having a, a immortal glorified body and you're in yahweh's revealing more and more of himself and you're just uh you're just having eternal peace joy righteousness love you can't even um all we can do is have physical types of it. Like Dr. Kinley said, uh, they asked him, well, they asked him what eternal damnation was like. He said, it's like a, having a migraine headache throughout eternity. Well, you want any part for that? No, we don't no, like, no. You don't even like a migraine headache for just a few seconds, much mm. less eternity. And, and so, and, and matter of fact, he used to say, you, you don't wish your, worst enemy to receive the, the their part in the lake of fire now that's that i mean that that's how bad it is it's not a, just a game thing you understand and then all i gotta do is you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free that's john 8 32 and yeah that's what he does he tells you the truth you can receive the holy spirit and be one of his angels and, and giving him thanks and praise throughout eternity in peace, joy, righteousness, no, no negativity, pure positivity. <laughs> I mean, you just don't get no better than that. You know, uh, in other words, our heavenly father owns everything. So we're going to inherit eternal life and immortal glorification. And that's there's nothing worth losing that your soul over. You understand? All you have to do is believe Yahshua. And Dr. Kinley said that. Believe Yahshua or go to the lake. That's pretty simple, ain't it? Hmm. And so that last uh, circle was showing how that Yahshua is surrounded by his uh, angels and, and, and you're in his spiritual body giving him thanks and praise 
Uh, and that just starts the fifth age. You still got six and seven to go. <laughs> See? So, so far, we've only got, uh, like, if you're looking at the days of creation, like and unto the ages, we've really, uh, we're really in Wednesday and, or, you know, age wise. And Wednesday has to end so that Thursday can come. You understand? So that's why this fourth age must end so that the fifth age can come, the fifth day of the week. You see that? So you can look at those ages and dispensations just like days of the week. After they end, another one comes. It's not showing. It's not the total end. It's just uh, uh, now. And even with the dispensations, if you look down below, we're in the sixth dispensation. See, when Yahshua died on the cross, uh, didn't the veil of the temple rent in twain from the top to the bottom? Yes. Well, that that's representing, see, the antiluvians like the court roundabout, post-luvians like the holy place. And then what he's doing is what divides between the holy place and the most holy place is the second veil. So when he dies on the cross, didn't it say the veil of the temple uh, uh, was torn from the top to the bottom? That's Yahshua bringing all the physical to an end. Well, why does he do that? Because he's going to repeat it in this sixth dispensation, but he's going to rip out all the flesh. He's going to burn up all the physical because it's all a type and a shadow. You understand? And usher it back into the spirit. In other words, the angelic realm was first, then the physical creation. Now the physical runs its course. Then it goes back to the angelic. Isn't that declaring the end from the beginning? Mm -hmm. And that's what he's doing. This seventh dispensation is going to be the kingdom of in immortality. Even though this age is the kingdom age, we still have physical bodies, but we have, but you can receive, uh, you can be a true recipient of the Holy Spirit. And then what's going to happen is at the universal revelation, that's when you get an immortal glorified body. This mortal shall put on immortality. That's what those scriptures say up there. And 2 Peter 3 and 13 says, um, seeing that all these things uh, shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought we be in holy conversation conduct, uh, hastening in, to the coming of the day of Yahweh, in which the heavens will pass away, the great one. Then it says, and 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 he, sh what is 2, Tim uh, 2 Peter 3, 13? It talks about, um, about a new heaven and a new earth which dwelleth righteousness. That's the, you know, that's the kingdom in immortality coming up. Um, mm. And so that's the difference. When you have, and Dr. Kinley used to say, uh, uh, people talk about the end of the world. He said, you don't realize the world's ended twice already. <laughs> and that's what he has on them lines there of the antiluvian age. He's got Noah and the flood. Second Peter three and six, the world that then was overflow with water perished. That means it ended. And first Corinthians 10, 11 on that line, on those red letters on the line. First Corinthians 10, 11 says these things happened to them as an example upon whom the ends of the world have come. See, it says ends, plural. So it happened with Noah and the flood. Then with the death, burial, resurrection of Yahshua, he's got Hebrews 9, 26. Uh, it says, which he, uh, he has suffered since the foundation of the world, but once now in the end of the world, end of the post luvian age, end of, he's calling that an end of the world, hath Yahshua appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And it has the same 1 Corinthians 10, 11 on both. Uh, with Noah that the flood and also with Yahshua on the cross there uh, upon whom the ends of the world are come and then now we read the second Thessalonians 1 6 through 8 tonight and that's mm -hmm. the universal revelation when he reveals himself to everyone and and it says and to you are troubled rest with us when Yahshua Messiah shall reveal from, from heaven with his mighty angels see and, and you can you can be one of his mighty angels, <laughs> you know, receiving a more glorified body, taking vengeance on them that know not Yahweh and obey not the gospel of our Savior, Yahshua Messiah, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction. Now, why? Now, uh, well, how can this angel? What, what happens is 
they're those people in the lake uh since they didn't believe Joshua or they you know they felt that it was better to uh serve themselves or serve Satan or serve whatever the world uh uh they will not re they will not have immortal glorified bodies and they'll see the ones that do have immortal glorified bodies and can't have one and that's what's going to torment them you understand in other words they're going to see something they can't have and that's what's going to burn them throughout eternity and he's going to bring it back to remembrance why they uh you know why they're receiving that damnation and matter of fact uh joshua gave a very good parable about that uh, in uh luke 16 and 19 because two men died the rich man and lazarus died and lazarus was a beggar didn't have much in his life but it's said that he died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. You understand? In other words, he's comforted in the holy place in Joshua because Abraham was given the promise. So he has the promise of eternal life. Then it said the rich man who had good things, he's now tormented in the flame. See how he's in the, he's at the altar uh, and he's being tormented down there. See, and then he says, uh, Abraham sent Lazarus that he might dip his finger in, in that water and cool my tongue, for I'm tormented in this flame. See, if you didn't have a powder, you wouldn't know what it was about, would you? <laughs> and so, uh, and then, then Abraham tells him, uh, there's a great gulf fixed. See, there's a big difference between eternal life and eternal damnation. <laughs> and those that uh, or have eternal life they can't go down to the lake <laughs> and those that are in the lake they can't come up and receive eternal life too late you see that and uh and so uh and and, and you know what abraham told him because at that time of course that's before yacht it's a parable and Joshua is showing him the dip also the difference between the New Testament or the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and those that don't have the Holy Spirit. There's a great gulf fixed yeah. between the truth and the lies that are being taught to the world. And he says, well, they got Moses and the prophets. Let him hear them. And, you know, that man, the guy's in the he's being tormented. And he says, no, uh, send them back to my five brethren. He's got six. All he cares about his physical family. He don't care about nobody else. And six represents the flesh. If they don't, uh, if they don't, uh, uh, it, it, they'll believe if a man rose from the dead and the Holy Spirit said, well, they don't believe Moses. Neither they believe if a man rose from the dead. And so what you have there is, since Lazarus is comforted, he's likened unto somebody with an immortal glorified body. You don't have no remembrance of the physical anymore. And that's what gives you eternal life and bliss and happiness. And that's what uh, Isaiah 65, 17 says. Behold, I create a new heaven and a new earth. I create new heavens and a new earth. The former shall not be remembered, neither shall it come into your mind. So it's, see, it sure ain't like the world got it being, oh, uh, you're going to see grandma and grandpa. And and your family, when you go, we're gonna meet. We're gonna meet up in heaven. Well, that ain't what the Bible says. You understand? That's carnal minded. You understand? You think you still? You think it's still gonna be physical? You understand? And he says that he creates new heavens and a new earth. The former shall not be remembered, neither shall it come into mind. But those that are in the lake, they do have a remembrance. See, that's why he's gonna bring it back to remembrance. Why? You you're you're suffering in the lake because you rejected Joshua. You thought something was more important than eternal life. You understand? And that, and, and 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 you'll and and he'll bring it back to remembrance why you don't wow. have a more a more glorified body. People thought class some uh something else was more important than class. You understand what I'm saying? Or trying to help somebody else out. And you see how people follow people instead of following the truth and researching things. This is a school of research. You got people out there acting like you can't research nothing. How do you think we learned what we learned? We searched and researched. See, especially when the false doctrine comes. 
That's you know a fact. Saying? And people just follow people and think that, and because there's a lot more people believe in the whatever, you know, that it must, you know, but when you see a lot of people go after things, you should check that. <laughs> it never has been a whole men. You understand? Mm-hmm. And then when they, I, and then you got guys bad mouthing the transcripts. Now that there ain't nothing right about that. That was nothing. Yeah. That was that was the Holy Spirit speaking through Dr. Kinley on the floor. Why would you discourage me in reading them? Crazy. Yeah. And then, then when they don't follow along with what you say, then all of a sudden they ain't no good. Oh, I just don't believe just the transcript. You go to the law and the prophets. Well, we do go to the law and the prophets. Dr. Kinley does. See? But Every really, time. You know, yeah, that's right. Every and single every, time. Everything we teach and the things that are on the charts, uh, the Holy Spirit, uh, it's backed up by the things in the Bible. And Dr. Kinley said, if it's not in the Bible, don't teach it. And people are teaching things they ain't in the Bible. You understand? <laughs> and taking their carnal-minded interpretation of it. Even though they can preach pretty good, they they almost they take some of the concepts that the world does and drags it right up in the school and acts mm-hmm. like that's a vision and revelation. Well, I used to hear people say, whatever the world teaches, what if there were I remember people saying, Dr. Kinley told them they you didn't have nothing right. Nothing. And then they, now they got the world. They're doing the same thing that the world teaches. You understand? Mm-hmm. It, it, well, you know, I guess they had, I guess the world mm-hmm. had that right. No, he didn't. <laughs> See? And that's why you need to uh, take the chastisement. Matter of fact, I was just reading the transcript. Dr. Kinley was talking about, you know, how people pray for things. And he said, you ought to pray for to get a good whipping by Yahweh. To chastise you <laughs> so that you can be corrected and come into the body. You understand? Because there's things wrong with you. <laughs> and that, that's a sign of that's a sign of love from Yahweh, right? Chastise. That's right. Whom Yahweh love, he chastises and scourges every son. So you can't really, those circles are representing from eternity to eternity. So you mm-hmm. can't really explain, you know, but he does. He he, he's cut everything come from eternity it goes back just like everything come from spirit it goes back to spirit you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and he's the king of the kingdom and you got to go back through him if you want eternal life because he made you and he's the one that uh has eternal life to give he give us life breath and all things you know what i'm saying see mm-hmm. and so there just ain't nothing no better than what this teaching teaches you know and there's always more to it i've just gave you a little explanation i've always liked the death burial resurrection ascension to him you know what i'm saying seeing how he's rolling on down and that's the way it comes really you know we uh you got a death burial resurrection now see this age you know dispensation ages real quick if you look at the ages you know uh uh like you see uh you know yahweh he's the beginning of the creation of yahweh right then he created the angelic and the physical. Now that's the first age. That's like an entrance way to Yahweh's purpose. Just like in the pattern, the first age is a gate. So, so he has he created the angelic and the physical and has a purpose behind it, right? Then that second age, and you know, those angels were cast out never to return and some kept their first estate. So that's showing you a division between light and darkness. Just like in the second age, it's still the first dispensation. There was a division between light and darkness with Adam. He was he was he was uh, in the garden in a peaceful state, uh, filled with the Holy Spirit. You always say, "In the day you eat of, you'll surely die." Did he eat? She was deceived and ate. He ate, and it says right there, "In Adam all die." That's a death. Okay, man's now carnal minded. They're at. Uh, you know, Adam and Eve died in their conscience or soul. And there's a reason for that. In other words, they're in the most holy place. In the most holy place, they're like the angels. Angels don't have babies. So they had to get, come into a carnal-minded state so they could get carnal and populate the airplane with souls so that Yahweh can save them through Joshua. And that's the purpose for the for mankind is that he's, he's in the soul-saving business. And so from the fall of Adam down to Noah, man's in a 
that whole, see that second age is just like the second step of the pattern. The altar is death. So when Adam all died, that's a death state, ain't it? Well, the third step is the labors. Got a flood, don't you? <laughs> so that's that's water, you see? And, and that's like a little labor. And then you got Pharaoh and his host cast into the Red Sea, children of Israel uh, under carnal ordinances. That's a burial. That's a whole burial thing there. And then John the Baptist is burying the dead Jews. You see how that third age is just like the labor, which is the third step of the pattern of a burial. So you see the death burial. Then it took Yahshua Messiah to die, bury, and resurrect. That sunrise. Then when he ascends, he pours out the Holy Spirit. Now that's the resurrection for mankind. See, the fourth age is just like what happened at the door, which is the fourth step. He anointed the high priest, so now he's anointing people with the Holy Spirit now that believe him. You understand? You can receive the Holy Spirit. That's a resurrection in your heart and mind. You see what I'm saying? And then what's going to, and then the next age is the fifth age. You can, uh, if you've been resurrected uh, with the gift of the Holy Spirit by believing the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah, you can now receive an immortal, that spirit's going to, uh, just like the spirit made us in our mother's womb and gave us physical life, he's going to give us an immortal glorified body and give us eternal life with an immortal glorified body. You see that? And so that's an ascension. <laughs> See how you got a death? That's a big death, burial, resurrection, ascension, ain't it? <laughs> just using the ages there. Yeah. See, and just like when he was a lamb slain before the foundation of the world, that's a death. Then he buried everything in the creation. Every, every, he's buried in everything, if you know what I mean. Now he's going to take it back. That's a resurrection. You understand? And then ascend back. You know, like it says, in, um, and that's the last few scriptures he's got there on the chart there, is uh, under Day of Eternity, he's got 1 Corinthians 15, 27 through 28. And we just read earlier about Genesis 2 and 4 there. That's 2 and 4 King James Version. These are the generations of the heaven and earth in the day uh, that Yahweh Elohim made the heavens and the earth. Uh and, you know, boy, and even explaining three heavens there. <laughs> uh, you know, everything. This, matter of fact, people don't, people still have heaven like the world sees it. They think heaven is a geographical location. They don't see it as a state of mind and don't realize that, you know, Paul said he was caught up to the third heaven and he was laying on the ground. You understand? And Dr. Kinley was caught up to the third heaven. And that's, you know, we're being caught up. You can be caught up when you're sealed with the Holy Spirit. This is a heavenly teaching. Uh, and, and, and really, if you receive, and it says, and we had it quoted today and read probably too. I can't remember sometimes. First John 5 and 7. So there's three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, the Holy Spirit. These three are one. So if the Holy Spirit's in you, that makes you in heaven. You see that? <laughs> uh, we, 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 but we, and what's going to happen is you get to, re you get to receive the, you get to receive the kingdom in immortality. You understand? In other words, uh, well, uh, yeah. So I mean, and plus Yahshua Messiah. I mean, there's so much about heaven. I mean, these are all lectures that it takes a little bit to teach. You know what I'm saying? But as you said, you know, when you have questions. We can go into them, you know what I'm saying? But uh, hopefully um, that answered a little bit of your question there. And uh, if you learn anything, thank you, Yahweh, to the son Yahshua Messiah. Thank you, brother. Praise Yahshua, bro. Praise Yahshua. Yeah. yeah. So. Who is, is that Terry? Praise Yahshua. Yeah, I think Terry oh, short oh, up, too. Oh, well, he sure did. He, he tarried, but it sure shall not tarry. <laughs> <laughs> Though the vision tarry. <laughs> now, he can go into it, you know, you ask him them questions. He'll, he'll, so, is, is the, okay, so the day of Yahweh, is the day of Yahweh Yahshua, is it eternity, or is it Sabbath, the day of Yahweh? 
Well, they're all, they're pretty much all in the same. You know what I'm saying? Okay. See, That's when, right. when, uh, when Yahweh, you know, you know, we go back to the Moses chart there. You see how we have Yahweh is uh, the cloud symbolizing eternity. Well, we have the Yahweh being the father. Father means first state. So when he's without discernible shame form and he takes on those, and I think the first speaker talked about that, how that the, those attributes are without discernible shape and form there. They're, they're, and Dr. Kinley used to call it inorganic. Well, inorganic means no life, <laughs> yeah, but there, it's at a rest state. He's at a Sabbath state. But what happens is those attributes, he purposed within himself to take on shape and form. Now, when he takes on shape and form, same attributes there, but now they're in a shape and form. That's called the word or son. Son means second state because his first state is pure spirit alone and by himself. You understand without discernible shape and form. Then he takes on shape and form right within himself. That's the son. Now, is, isn't it, um, you know, when Yahshua Messiah said in John 8 and uh, 12, I am the light of the world. He that followed me shall never walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And in Genesis 5, or 1 and 5, it says he called the light day and the darkness he called night. Well, isn't the sun I mean, we're talking about the only begotten son. Ain't he the light? Uh, he's the son that made the physical son. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In other words, uh, man thinks, well, the scientists look at the Bible and say, well, I don't see how you can have a creation. The sun didn't come in on until the fourth day. Well, how can you have a creation? Because you you don't realize, uh, and we and it's true, physical plants can't. Uh, do have to have the sun to have life, but you don't. We don't realize that the S U N is a type of the S O N. He's the one that made the sun. And Dr. Kinley said one time to show you how great Yahshua Messiah is. He says, <laughs> he said that Yahshua, the brilliance or the brightness of Yahweh Elohim, he is so great, being the only begotten Son, that he makes that physical sun darker than a million thousand midnights. Now that is something. You ever hear now that? That's light. Like, now yeah, that's light. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's light, man. <laughs> that's the day. <laughs> that's the day of Yahweh. So uh and doc and uh matter of fact on the Elo in the Elohim book, the front page He's got two scriptures there where it says the cloud symbolizing eternity. Uh, uh, Isaiah and Micah. He's got that's he's got Isaiah 57 and 15. And it says, Thus saith the high and lofty one, whose name is holy, and he dwelleth in eternity. You understand? And then Joshua the Messiah said in John 14, and well, you know, you also have 35 and 8 of Isaiah saying, there shall be a highway there. It shall be for the wayfaring man, of though fools shall not err therein. You have been a fool before, but you can't err in this. And so since Yahweh is the high and lofty one, whose name is holy that inhabits eternity, Isaiah 57, 15. Yahshua the Messiah said in John 14 and 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Yahweh's the high and lofty one. Yahshua's the way, the truth, and the life. Ain't that the highway? <laughs> mm -hmm. hey, hey. You, ain't, you ain't coming back to the Father without the Son. Uh, in other words, he's the one come from the Father in righteousness. That's the only way to go back. See, it's through mm -hmm. Yahshua the Messiah. So get the Micah. You have Micah 5 and 2? It says, though Bethlehem Ephratah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, out of thee, uh, well, I forget what it says, uh, thee shall come forth uh, ruler in Israel. And, you know, the holy name says, and his, well, uh, you better read it. I can mess that up there. 
But it says that Yahshua is from everlasting. In other words, and most of us never look at him as being from everlasting. You understand? So uh, I got so, I got it. I'll, Michael say this, five and two. I'll say this about the chart too. Dr. Kinley says the creation abides within eternity or within Yahweh or in eternity. And I forget what the bottom part says, but, um, but, uh, uh, oh boy, what was that? Oh, now this is how great Yahweh is. Yahweh put time in eternity, not eternity in time. So really we've been in the realm or the day of eternity the whole time. And, you know, just as you have a physical day that has the night or darkness and light, we'll see even with the dispensations, the first two dispensations, the sun's down, Adam died in his conscience, mankind was in darkness from the fall of Adam all the way down to Yahshua Messiah. That's night. Then he dies, buries, resurrects, and pours out the Holy Spirit. Now you have the opportunity to be enlightened by the Holy Spirit. That's day. So that's a night and a day right within the day of eternity, just with time. You see that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Micah 5 and 2, what does it say? Micah 5 and 2 says, but thou, Bethlehem. How you say that, baby? Ephratah. Ephratah. Though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler of Israel whose going forth has been from of old, from everlasting. Yeah, so you see Yahshua, he's from everlasting. But <laughs> you see how before we come in the class, we had him just being a fleshly man? You understand? Mm -hmm. Born through the loins of the Virgin Mary? I mean, the Roman Catholic Church still calls Mary the mother of God. You know, uh -huh. she ain't no mother of God. She did bring and forth that's why Doc, That's why Doc had an issue with B.C., because um, oh, that's right. Because there's nothing before Christ or before the Messiah. Messiah nothing yeah. before Him. That's right. It says in Colossians, He's before all things, and by Him do all things consist. So if He's so if He's before all things, how can you have four thousand years before? It's before His birth through the loins of the Virgin Mary, and even mm -hmm. Isaiah nine and six: a child is born, but a son is given. There's a difference between the son given and the one born. That that son given is the only begotten son. You understand from eternity. See, but the child born, that, that's a fleshly body coming in uh, to fulfill. And it was prophesied by the Holy Spirit that uh, her seed would uh, bruise the serpent seed's head. I mean, he shall bruise his head. You're going to bruise his heel. And we got the serpent uh, when he uh, when Yash was crucified, they bruised his heel. They, they they did kill him. He was buried, but Yahweh, he's doing that because he's going to show the power that's in the resurrection. You understand? And the, and that's what Paul said after the Holy Spirit poured out on him. He said uh, in Philippians 3 and 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Hmm. See? And that's real, and we know something about that power, because we, you know, you know, we were some, uh, we were a pitiful mess when it come down, <laughs> when we come down to this school. Doa, you understand? Yeah, we were dead on arrival. We didn't know about Yahweh, Elohim, or Yahshua. You understand? <laughs> we didn't have no vision and revelation. And that's yeah. why I don't like when people bad mouth the founder, like say, no. "Oh, he's not the source." You wouldn't know about a law or a prophet if Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua had not given that man a vision. Yeah, so it was the Holy Spirit through him for sure. Yeah. And, and 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 he don't he send somebody at the end of every age? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so that man was the one sent at the end of the age. But like he said, he received Yahshua and Messiah. And he mm -hmm. said that if uh, I ain't your savior, if I go out there and get hit by a truck and I'll die, be. or if I'm I'll say it, I'll say it, I'll say it. I'll be if another I'm dead hanging nigga. on a cross, you understand? He said he would be another dead, you understand? Nigger, I'll say it. That's what he said. And so was that saying he's your savior? That's what he said. That's, no. that's what he said. That he said he'd just be And then also he had a soul that needed to be dead saved. Person. That's right. He had a soul that needed to be saved. And that's and what before he said. Before 1931, 
June 6th, he was a sinner. You're a sinner without the Holy Spirit. So he's disqualified to be the savior, but he's not disqualified to be the prophet, though. He ain't disqualified. Oh, he was the one sent at the end of the age. You, you ever see anybody can put the Bible together like you, he wrote on these charts? Not close. It has to be the Holy Spirit in him to do that. Uh, it proves that he had a vision and revelation. <laughs> and I tell you what, I like this one thing. We was reading it the other day, and we had a little Saturday session. And if somebody has the yellow in book, you ought to just read this one paragraph. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in the Ellen book that's great. But this is one thing that really, well, it, it's a testimony of his. And what it is, is it's in the fourth volume, and it's page two, and it's about the second paragraph. Does anybody have that? Or you want me to read it? I got it. You okay. said, uh, it's where it, said, it I, says, it talks about, in, in my 40 years of experience, Wait, wait, where did you say that? Is it a four-volume? It's the introduction, volume? volume four, and it's mm -hmm. the second page. Uh-huh. Page two, about the second paragraph, it says, well, in my 40 years. I got it. Yeah, mm -hmm. read that. All right, it's, I'll have Deidre read it. She's a better reader. All right, it says, uh, it says, well, out of my 40 years of personal experience, plus an intensive and inexhaustible scientific and philosophical research, or since Yahweh showed me the divine vision and revelation, interpretation uh, of it, of its meaning, I have not found one so-called religious faith that fully realizes that Yahweh Elohim is a universal spirit pattern with an immutable spirit law embodied within himself, by which he established the perfection of the operation of his revealed eternal purpose. Now or that's only that's only <laughs> one sentence. <laughs> yeah. And it's action packed, ain't it? Yeah. <laughs> that's just one sentence. Or now, in other read, words, yeah, read but, the next sentence. Or or in other words, Yahweh declared the end from the beginning. So all of that was just saying that Yahweh declared the end from the beginning. And that was this some sweet is. stuff. Have you ever found anybody saying, y'all realize that Yahweh Elohim is a mm -hmm. universal spirit pattern with an immutable spirit law and body within himself by which <laughs> he established the perfection of the operation of his revealed eternal purpose. You ever read anybody mm -hmm. talk like that? No. That's his first no. sentence. Now read the next. And he says, in other words, Yahweh declared the end from the beginning. Read on. This same universal spirit pattern with the spirit law embodied therein was revealed to Moses, the prophets and apostles by his spirit, which is sufficient to reconcile the world to the one and only true Yahweh and the one and only true way to universal truth, righteousness, joy, and perfect peace. Uh, you know, these are sweet things, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe that sixth grader could write like that. <laughs> no, that's the Holy Spirit doing that. Ain't it? Uh, yeah. Read uh, on. Oh, it mentions you, Frank. Frankly. No, no it don't. <laughs> Frankly. <laughs> Frankly and honestly speaking, the true knowledge and understanding of the divine pattern and its unerring spirit law operation manifesting Yahweh and his purpose through every cosmic phase of nature and throughout the dispensation and ages is the supreme test of every human creature. Yeah, okay. It's, it's the supreme test for every human creature's personal experience, understanding and knowledge of Yahweh and his kingdom. That was sweet. Yes. That is. That it's is powerful. powerful. And you see how, you see how, and so that's, so we got a school and we're being tested. And do you hear me any, you have all, now, now, now he took off the flesh in 1976, right? Yeah. Have you heard anybody teach like mm -hmm. that? Nope. <laughs> no. No. I mean, 
And you know what I'm saying? But now they're smarter than he is and they know more and all this kind of stuff. You understand? So I'm the same way with you. That you hear what his testimony is. And he also said that this thing is, I, I, I believe that this is just as much for you as it was for me. What, you, what we were saying earlier to Dean Terry. You just Deidre, said that. Same exact. That's exactly what we were saying to Dean Terry earlier. Yeah, yeah. that's what he said. Yeah. That's what he taught. Mm -hmm. It's in the Ellen book. So, so this thing, it is the truth. You always, uh, you know, and, and I'll tell you what, those guys, I mean, I remember seeing the last, the last international dean. He would say that that book's just for the world. Now, you know, does any school, <laughs> what school you know ain't got no textbook? And then the <laughs> textbook's just for the world. It, you can't learn nothing from it here in the school. You understand? Yeah. One reason why they don't print it now is because, uh, you know. They, it they, is show they, them up. Yeah, that's right. You will read it and find out they don't know what they're talking about. It will show them up. To you. That's right. The same yeah. reason they denounced the, the um scriptures, I mean the, the uh the transcripts, because yeah, as soon as you start reading those transcripts, it will start proving that what you are teaching is wrong. That's it the might, reason why they don't want to read them. It might do that, yeah. So you can yeah. just see this this is uh I mean there just ain't nothing no better than this teaching right here. And uh and and so where he was uh, where you had the brothers preaching the true gospel at the beginning of the age. And then Dr. Kinley and many of the people that uh, heard the true gospel that were, uh, that were pillars in the school, many of them have taken off the flesh. So who is it given to now? We have mm -hmm. to, we have to keep the, we have to keep the gospel preaching. You know what I'm saying? In other words, I agree. he's done, he's done got us out here. And we just got to try to do the best we can to try to help anybody we can, to whoever we can contact, you know? And so that's been our job. And, uh, and you know, and, uh, you know, it, and uh, we just praise Yahshua Messiah for this beautiful teaching, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and we're thankful to him because uh, there's more to I, learn. There's more that we don't about... know than we do. <laughs> And one thing I'll say about the Elohim book and the transcripts and the charts, if I, I believe that if we focused on these things, we will make less blunders and have less arguments and have less squabbles because we will all be thinking and preaching and focusing on the same thing, which is what the man taught, not our ideas. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. And if you and really when it comes down to it, don't you think the Holy Spirit's gonna agree with it? The Holy Spirit says. Yes. Yeah, that's absolutely yeah. correct. Yeah. <laughs> that's now there like, are there are some errors and mistakes. Dr. Kim used to say that about he this, said that. He in said that Elo, in the Elohim book. I mean, he know, said that. He said that there was he said that when you try to go from pure spirit and try to get it into words, it's just certain things that's gonna be lost. And then also, he also said that it was sabotage. But here's the thing. He didn't say not to read the Elohim book because right. the Bible has errors in it. And we still use yeah. the Bible. Yeah. yeah. But the vision, revelation, and the pattern does correct those things. It That's corrects right. it. That's right. And mm -hmm. it will do the same thing when you read the Elohim books and you read these charts. He Even he said all of the charts. He said, I could point out things that's wrong on the charts. But there's still yeah. enough there for you to be saved. Is, That's is the right. Point. That's right. And we've been reading. And I uh, and uh, Lenore, are you still there? You could probably don't have to record everything. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the uh, um, uh, yeah, those last lectures. He's telling those people. About